Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Saturday, April 28th, 12, 17 a.m., 2018. You're looking at Aoyama venting as we've been watching. This is live over at Volcano Watch, YT. Meteorologists expect the coldest April on record. Heads up. <laughs> April 2018th is expected to be the coldest month of April in the United States since reliable record keeping began in 1895. <sighs> what did I just hear? April 2018th is expected to be the coldest month of April in the U.S. since reliable record keeping began. Reliable. Heads up with that word. The historical low spring temperatures have created problems for farmers in the northern plains and Midwest as the unseasonably cold soil prevents them from planting their crops on time. Agricultural experts expect that as in years past, the cold spring temperatures portend a lower yield when farmers harvest in the fall. Astonishingly, Astonishingly, much of the Northern Plains in the Northeast was colder than Anchorage, Alaska in the beginning of this spring here. Check it, take a look. One, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen states colder than Anchorage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight states, maybe nine if you go over here, colder than Fairbanks for the first two weeks of April 2018. That's a heads up. Heads up, Al Gore. Gusty thunderstorms with hail will mark the arrival of a brief chill, brief chill in the Northeast. What? A brief chill in the Northeast? Isn't it spring? Isn't summer just around the corner? Uh, is there snow forecast for the Adirondacks? Indeed there is. 10 to 12 inches in some places in upstate New York through the weekend. Let's take a look at the GFS models. Starting now, moving through the next 12 hours, we're going to see snow in South Central Oregon and the Northern uh, Sierras. Snow piling up in Ontario. Heads up, Ontario. Snow's going to move into Utah through Monday into the DAX, Northern PA, North Jersey, Vermont. Heads up. We're talking April 30th of snow. Uh, and we're getting snow here in Colorado, forecast for tomorrow. The snow is going to continue into May for the West, bringing much-needed snowpack to the high mountains. The snow is going to continue to pile up in Ontario, apparently, and eastern Canada through the first week of May. Heads up, eastern Canada. And then we have a snow event forecast for May 7th. To bring much needed snow to southern Colorado, into New Mexico there, maybe even to the Texas Panhandle for May 8th. <laughs> May 8th, snow, Texas. And that's a boom. Oh, my goodness. Whew. That GFS model is looking crazy. We're going to keep a close eye on it. Extreme cold weather in southeast China is blamed on global warming. <laughs> I'll leave you links. Let's look at extreme weather hitting the Middle East. Whew, this stuff is crazy. We've got this huge sandstorm front accompanied with two inch hail and a huge plug for the Washington Post. Seismic update, no quakes of note. We have a frack quake popping off quickly. Oklahoma, little bit of West Coast movement while we're making the video here, Cala Mesa. But we have a large quantity of moderate activity here in Central America, Ecuador, El Salvador. Heads up, Picos, Mexico, all in the four range, nothing significant, 5.0 in Papua New Guinea. Volcano update, Ducono, Piton de la Fornas, Sacro Jurima. Ducono, volcanic ashes reported, Sacro Jurima exploded today. So if you want to see any... Uh, Fresh imagery, come over here to Volcano YT, our live update, where you can see Saku is currently outgassing, Shinmodaki, all quiet. Here is the Shirane, the <laughs> ski resort vacation from Hell Mountain, also in the quiet, but Aoyama is still lightly outgassing. Nice to come over here and watch him, give him support. Heads up. Steamboat Geyser at Yellowstone National Park erupts for the third time in six weeks. Oh, my goodness. It doesn't mean anything. Yellowstone is not going to erupt. Yellowstone is a hydrothermal hotspot in the center of the craton. 
one of the largest hydrothermal hotspots in all of the planet Earth. Millions of people flock to this area every year to see the natural phenomena of geyser ejection, especially Old Faithful, which faithfully erupts hourly in the basin. Now, this geothermal activity shifts on a decadal scale. It's been happening time immemorial since the National Park Service has been monitoring the activity. The hydrothermal activity migrates around the basin. So what you're seeing here is an uptick in activity at this geyser. It's the largest active geyser in uh, Yellowstone, and it's the rare, they're calling it, eruption of Steamboat Geyser is no longer rare. It happens regularly. A large rare eruption happened on September 3rd, 2014. Subsequent eruptions on March 15th, April 19th, and now, and now mean that this geyser is now going to be frequented by visitors. They're going to put a new parking lot here, and it's going to generate millions of dollars in revenue for the National Park Service. It doesn't mean Yellowstone's going to erupt. <laughs> That's a heads up. Moving on, cargo transit along the Russian northern sea route expected to rise by 50% this year. Nobody checked the map. Maybe this 20 foot of ice in this region is going to hamper efforts, as well as the record ice increase. We're getting a double peak here, coming into a new uh, grand solar minimum glacial period. We're going to be expecting that this Arctic sea ice volume to stay well above 2014 levels, continuing to increase year after year, moving further to the right and expanding up and above the gray area. As it did in 2014, we're going to potentially see 2018 ice well above the decadal scale throughout the summer. That's how you start to build ice. Now, they're claiming that these cargo northern sea route is expected to rise by 50% this year. They must be sending 1,000 boats through for one week in September because this is only going to be open for a short period of time. The pattern has shifted. The Beaufort Gyre is no longer warm, and this ice is going to build. Multi-year ice is building and is very thick. And we are at in the multi-decadal average, and we are going back up. And that's the data. So I think that RT should be fact-checking. Solar cycle 24 declining more quickly than forecast. Whew, it is. The smooth predicted sunspot number for April to May 2018 is about 15. However, the actual monthly values have been lower. They say. Who are they? Well, let's get to some science. Here's solar cycle 24. <clears throat> now, you can clearly see here that there was a double peak and the second peak higher than the first peak in solar cycle 24, the second double peak happening shortly after 2014. Many of you are asking what will solar cycle 25 be like? What's the start date? No clue. What's the end date? Who knows? What's the peak amplitude? Anyone's guess. And will it start at all? Who knows? There has been a negative sunspot appearing on the sun in recent weeks, which is typical of the, ons, uh, the onset of the next solar cycle, cycle 25, which is why a lot of people's panties got in a bunch over solar cycle 25 beginning. It's not beginning. There's evidence of it beginning now. But that doesn't mean it has begun. We're still heading into the minimum here and won't reach minimum until 2020, 2021. That's not opinion. That's just based on the angle. Now, if you correlate it with historical data and we come look at the historical sunspot data, what they're matching up is the double peak here, peak, peak, uh, in five and six. You can see here cycle five and six. Here cycle five and six where they're mimicking cycle five as being cycle 24 with the second peak higher, the double peak, and cycle six would be mimicking cycle 25. So in the historical documentation, solar cycle six was the same amplitude as cycle five. So based on historical documentation, solar cycle 25 should be at least the same amplitude as 24 based on this. And that's what they were talking about around a year ago. And it comes from the K2P blog here. 
Solar cycle 24 still on track to be the smallest sunspot cycle in 100 years. It now is officially the smallest sunspot cycle in 100 years, and it is mimicking uh, that cycle that we just showed you. With the second peak being higher than the first peak, as cycle 5 was showing, and that cycle 6 was the same amplitude as cycle 5. So that cycle 25 here will be the same amplitude as 24, based on the historical evidence. Now here's chapter 7, Dreading Solar Cycle 25, from Global Warming is for Dummies, Predicting Solar Cycle 25, which I really like. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Now that you've awakened, how do you awaken others? You give them this data. And that's why we do this show every night. <laughs> Scientists are dreading the next sunspot cycle, otherwise called Solar Cycle 25. Having completely failed in coming anywhere close with Cycle 24 predictions, they are now being extremely skittish, coming up with any early predictions for the next sunspot cycle. Truth! There is a feeling of tension in the air for the global warmists, having been shamed into a corner by the flattening temperature data. They now wait in dread for cycle 25 to start, which may never happen. <laughs> it may never happen, folks. Are you ready for global freezing your ass off? We are. We've been reporting on it for five months, and hopefully you're picking up what we're putting down. Hot, cold, soul cunt. <laughs> hot sun cold sun very simple it's waning and waxing cyclicity it is on a decadal scale a multi-decadal scale it's on a centennial scale here we see the centennial minimum back in 1875 it is on a millennial scale in the grand solar minimum scheme of things this is when the empires fail you are here folks it, the warming has ended. The cooling has begun. The time is now to start preparing for the future. <laughs> if you want to survive and thrive in the coming times, the next two years should be the precursor to the event. What that is, is anyone's guess. Some people know. I hope you got something out of the video. Share this with like-minded people. Start putting seeds in the dirt. You've got to fail to survive. And that's a boom. Look at those shiny glasses. <laughs>